Why would you just smoke and like yeah. a person and just throw it on the ground? Yeah. No, it's you need to hear it. I don't want to do that one. I'm not so bad. I know, Mr. Hill. Pack it, power. <laughs> I was crying, and then I just lost. Oh, I'm over it. Right. I thought I was doing good. Guess I was losing. You were too. Oh, yeah, well, thank you. Today. What are you losing? I am losing. Our battle of the world. I'm losing? The world of flesh and the devil. I just saw uh, a great victory for the flesh in the world. Because basically, we don't think God is good. We say it every day. We say God is what? Good all the time. All the time, all the time God is good. But sometimes our witness doesn't show that. So basically, everything God made is what? That's good. good. Everything he made. Should it be silly? Funny? Well, maybe some of the things he made might be funny. But things that God made should make us uncomfortable. Oh, you know what? This is our race dollar. I thought that was the funniest joke in the world. I didn't even notice. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I just want you to get in touch with this fact that if you're uncomfortable talking about sex, it's because you're losing a battle. Sex is something God made. The, what's, what should make us uncomfortable, what should be making us uncomfortable, is the fact that sex is being portrayed by the world is what? Is the opposite of what God planned. That should make us uncomfortable. But usually it doesn't. We can sit down and watch a movie that has all kinds of sexual stuff in it that that goes against God's plan. And we don't feel uncomfortable with it. Because if we felt uncomfortable with it, you'd be like here. Like what? You do what? Stop. So we're not saved. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of it. Let's turn that off. That's terrible. This is our eye fail in the second day. Do you see? You see our standard? So we're saying what the world says is okay is normal. What God says is okay is weird and uncomfortable. So even in this area of our life, okay, that's not how we were created to be. We've been lied to. We follow that lie. Okay, so our flesh is saying, this is making me uncomfortable, get rid of it. But what we need to start listening to is our spirit saying what? This is making me uncomfortable, get rid of it. Because in this chapter, we said, your body is what? Changing. It's a temple. Wow. It's a temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit resides there. Okay. We're supposed to leave our body as a temple. That's God's plan. But we don't, we're getting bombarded with an opposite message. Okay? The other, and so. Basically, Satan doesn't want us to know who we are supposed to be. So we said demons, their first object is to do what? Get you off so the first, the first goal of a demon or Satan is to prevent you from committing your life to Jesus. So that's our number one goal. 
to keep you from committing your life to Jesus. And if they can't get that goal, so if somebody's committed to the life for Jesus, then the second goal is what? Just keep you little off path. Keep them from following his plan. And the world, it, when Satan was cast out of heaven, where did he go? He went to this world. So it shouldn't, shouldn't surprise us that the values of this world go against what? God's values. So like that essay question I put on the soul states test, give me, give me something the world's trying to do about it. That's what I'm talking about. Because the world's values aren't God's values. But every day we're bombarded. I mean bombarded. The thing of it is, is it's not like in your face... It's subtle. It's enticing. You get messages. Every time we watch a show that goes against God's plan and we don't sit there and talk about it and analyze it, basically we're getting a subliminal messages that that type of behavior that's in that show is what? Okay. okay. It's good. It's normal. These are normal people. When, when some of that behavior, we should say, you know, they should be repenting. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm as guilty as you guys. Okay? I don't sit and watch the show when something comes up, I say, oh, you should repent! Repent, repent! <laughs> Maybe I should be doing that. Or maybe it would be like Jesus, because Jesus hung around with who? Bad people. He hung around with all of them. But the difference was, when Jesus hung around with them, what? They changed. They changed. Oh, Jesus, Jesus didn't change to them. They changed. So that's a question we ask ourselves. If we hang around with people, do the people we hang around with become more like Jesus? Or I become more like the world? Okay? Because the church gives us three offices. This is who you guys are. What are the offices of the church that you should have read about in this section? Do you know what each one of you are? Sinners. You are a priest. You are a prophet. I am a priest. I know it. You are a king. Every person in here. Now, of course, Satan doesn't what? He doesn't want you to know this. And he certainly doesn't want you to live it. Wait, we're... Okay? Every person in here is a priest, a prophet, and a king. The threefold mystery of the church. We are the church. We already said our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. When we worship, okay? When we live our life, it's actually an act of what? It's an act of worship. But we're demonstrating, you know, our witness. Remember what witness is? Actions. These are your actions. It's how you're showing your faith or not showing your faith. Either way, you're given a witness. Everything that you do gives a witness to everybody else. The question is, is our witness telling the truth of who we are, which is over here, or is it giving a false witness of who we are? Selfish? Manipulative? Angry? Self-centered? We can go up the whole list. Money-hungry? Glory hungry, popular hungry, okay? Values of the world. What is the job of a priest? To preach the word of God. To promote, to make miracles in front of God. Let's go back to Jewish times. What was the job of the priest? 
priests the good news. And Jewish time, what did the priest do in the temple? Government officials? He prayed. He did mass. What, Sierra? They made sacrifices. They made sacrifices. Oh. On behalf of who? The people that came to them for sin. Sacrifice so you can cover my sin. What does sacrifice mean? To lose something that and then turn it someone else. Okay. So sacrifice in, involves pain, suffering. If there's no pain or suffering, there's what? There's no sacrifice, really. So if you have to give something up that you really like, that's a sacrifice. If you have to do something you don't really like to do, that's a sacrifice. That's who you were called to be. Every person in here is called to sacrifice. We were called to suffer for the sake of Christ. Whatever that means. It could mean different things at different times. It could mean when your mom and dad said, we come and do this chore, you do it right away when your flesh is saying what? I don't want to do this. I didn't hear it quite. I didn't hear that, I don't think. I don't think I heard that. We get all these messages. Again, they're trying to give you a different witness than you're, what you're supposed to, but who you really are. This is who you really are. This is what God created you to be. So, whether you believe it or not, this is who you really are. So you have, you're living out a false identity when you're doing these other things. So we're called to sacrifice. What's a prophet do? Spread the word. So they speak God's word, right? Wait, no. Whoa. <laughs> I want bread. <laughs> if we read, again, if we read today's first reading... Where's the first reading coming from? That's the gospel. Where's the first reading coming from? Revelation. Revelation. John. The angel tells John to eat the scroll. Do it. What? Eat it. It says, eat the scroll. When you eat it, it's going to taste like honey. But your stomach is going to taste bitter. Basically, you're going to get indigestion, stomach ache. That scroll represents God's word. When we take in God's word, it's great. We love it. But when we try to live it out, what? It hurts. So even in the first reading today, we get a picture of what a prophet is. John was a prophet, but each one of us are called to be prophets. And again, if I'm going to give a witness of God's word, everybody else is going to think what? Hmm? You're weird. I'm weird. No, you're not. Tommy. So, you know, even before I actually committed myself to Christ, <laughs> I was living out some of this identity. So in high school, people, oh, that's Mr. Goody Two Shoes. Oh, uh, look at him. That's Goody Mr. Two-shoes. Brown Noser. <laughs> you guys know what a brown noser is? Yes. Yeah, it's basically it's someone who. It's a Leo. Um, excuse Whoa. me. Whoa. I'm sorry, that's oh. cool. That I spoke for Lucas. My natural inclination was to get along with my teachers. And because I got along with my teachers, and I asked my teachers questions, and I joked with my teachers, everybody thought I was just trying to what? Smooth them. Smooth them, right. But really, I, didn't, I can look at it now that I was exercising this role. 
But the rest of the people around me, what? They didn't like it. Because I was obeying the rules. Well, some of you have faced that same thing. When you obey the rules, you get made fun of. Or even somebody that doesn't typically obey the rules, they decide they want to obey the rules, what happens to them? They get made fun of. They get made fun of. Okay? Because you don't, you're not living the way you were created to be. This is how you're created to be. And a king, this is the hardest one. Normally you think of kings as what? Rich guys. Rich guys have all the power. That's why I want to be king, right? That isn't, Jesus told us what it, Jesus is the what? King. king of kings. That means there's no king what? Above, Above him. Uh, He's the king of kings. So he gives us an example of what a king is. What's his example? This is what Jesus said a king is. A true king. Even during the Middle Ages. If you look at who were the greatest kings. It's the kings that were concerned about who? Their people they were governing. They were trying to protect the people that they were over. They weren't trying to what? Tell people how great I am. You need to bow down before me. You need to do whatever I say. You need to give me all your money. We read a lot about ancient civilizations like that in sixth grade. Okay? That's not who a king is. This is a king. A king is somebody that will lay down their life for their subjects. So, this is the picture in the chapter that they're trying to get across to us, but this is the most difficult thing to live out. Because Satan doesn't want you to know this. Because if, if, I, if I actually know it and I'm actually living this, then what? Then you're going to make it to heaven. No, no. This has nothing to do with me making it to heaven. The devil is... What has to do with me making it to heaven? No, God. Saying yes to Jesus and repenting of my own sin. Okay? This has to do with living out that true thing, that true identity God made each person here. The moment you were conceived, you were a priest, a prophet, and a king. Your body became a temple of the Holy Spirit. Ready to be occupied. That's our challenge. Because if you don't remind yourself of this stuff, like I said, you're losing. Because for sure, you're going to get reminded of all the other stuff every day of every minute that you're outside of God's presence. They're going to be lied to. We are. We're, we're lied to all the time. So we're going to want to take the easy way out. Because that's our flesh. And Satan doesn't want you to know these things. And like I said, for your age group, this is the most difficult time of your whole life to do this. So you could say, well, Mr. Hale says it's the most difficult to my life, so I can just let this time period pass. Dang it. <laughs> really, it doesn't even have anything to do with what Mr. Hale says. You should, shouldn't be listening to Mr. Hale unless what? He's speaking the truth. Unless I'm speaking the truth from God. So if your heart resonates, because God created, put it in each one of your hearts, resonating truth. Because I, I say lots of stuff, this is garbage. Yeah. Although if you ask me, I would never say that. Because I am I struggle with what? Modesty. Modesty. Right. Oh. 
not recognizing God. I, I don't recognize these things enough. So that's our battle. So your assignment. We're at, already at the end of this chapter. Yeah, we just started last time. Lunch is in an hour. You're in an hour. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Open your book to page. I'm going to give you the answers. I'm going to let you take any note you want on this chapter because next week we're having the test on this chapter and it'll be open note, open book, whatever you want. But if you didn't take notes, it'll probably be harder. Chapter 5 is on page... Uh, 103. 114. Chapter 5? So you need to finish the reading because there's going to be some terms we didn't go over because the test is some of Mr. Hale, some of the book. All religion tests are like that. Okay? So I'm going to give you the answers to chapter review. Each Catholic family. Basically, where do we get the practice for all this? Jesus Church. You know where you get the practice for all this? I don't know what You know where you get the practice? Your family, right. What's that called? Number one, what's that called? Domestic office. It's called the domestic church. Your family is the domestic church. This is where you're practicing first how to be a disciple of Jesus. Isn't that ironic? Because most of us in our families, what? Hate each other. Yeah. We know our witness in our families is if people were to see us in our families, they'd say what? What a loser. They probably have a different picture of who we are. Yeah, probably. But the truth is, when you act that way in your family, you're not really being authentic of who you really are. Okay, so one is the domestic church. Two, the loving action of God's forgiveness of sins, his restoration of our friendship. A. That's salvation, yes. Back off. Without that, we'd be worried. In hell. In hell. Three, in scripture, the words for church, ecclesia, means what? People of God. Chosen people. Stand up if you think it's A. I don't know. I'm not standing. Stand up if you think it's B. It has my name. Stand up if you think it's C. Sit down. D. It's C. It's B. Just sit down. It's B. Those called together. <laughs> Number four. Jesus' mission as priest, prophet, and king is known as. I just put that on the board. You should know this one. D. Okay, D. The offices of the church of Christ. Four is D. Five. The church is like an international household of faith, all united through baptism. Sure. That's true. The church exists to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. It's true. It's true. That's our main job. That's why we're here. Remember, what did we say the three words are for why you're here? Virtues, love. We're supposed to know. No, love, serve, and serve. And the greatest service we said is to give your life up, but the, even greater than that is the fact that they can have heaven forever. 
So anytime, if, if somebody comes to know the gospel because of me, okay, Jesus threw out the stories of the, of the, he said in heaven, heaven rejoices ten times as much over one repentant sinner than they do over everybody that follows God. Because they know that that sinner was going where? Oh. Was going to hell. Number seven, from the time of Abraham and Moses, God called the Israelites to be his chosen people. Oh, it wasn't, it was before the... Well, that's true. Oh, I said Paul, because God Number eight, through the sacrament of reconciliation, we share in Jesus' mission as a priest, prophet, and king. What sacrament do we do that? Baptism. Baptism. As soon as we're baptized, so I said as soon as conception, but. So that's false? It's true. Should be baptism, yeah. I'm so sorry, Mark. Yeah. What do we do through the sacrament of reconciliation? Uh, yeah. we, we are forgiven, but we recognize that we're not following who we really are. Number nine, the first commandment requires us to come together on Sunday to observe the Lord's Day. False. Which commandment is it? It's like the second or third. The third commandment. I'm a genius. No, you're not. First commandment says what? It's like the only Thou shalt not worship any false gods. Yes, only have God as your God. Um, excuse you. Number 10. Jesus showed us that the true meaning of leadership is servant. True. That's true. Oh, wow. That's what a king is, right? Who's, who's choice today? Who's choice today?